Siamo a cavallo di Cusa Mutua. Sì, sì. Non necessito gai di introduzione. Credo. No, voglio presentare come un membro dei fischi, già sta. No, no. Sono abbastanza bravo in tutto questo presentazione. Molto bene. Eccepto a o Kovacium, che David ha fatto una presentazione molto extensa. Ah sì, no, perché David aveva lavorato anche, gli tenia, sì. Esatto, esatto. Io ho fatto qui tutto il recibo, io ho fatto qui tutto il recibo, perché... Sì, sì. Mi ricordo che qui sono le copie della Stanford Session, on active matter by a teacher who we are going to also and you do not have taken a copy of the view from your data. Any of you have not taken a copy? Good one. You have one? Only one you have not? Ah, ho lasciato un carrello del tizio, ho inviato una foto. No, ho inviato una foto, non mi conta se è un carrello. Andrà. Non so come stanno, perché io suppongo che ho avuto che non vi andranno per qualche giorno, però... Sì, sì, quanto tutto. Per start the afternoon session, as you know, Just for announcement, you remember that we have the hands-on session after this seminar that will be on the same room that was last week, on room number seven on the second building on this street. And uh, we have uh, first uh, the, the hands-on session on, uh, on, uh, on neuronal systems and then the one on active uh, media. So now, uh, now we are going to have a seminar, which is going to be given by Jurel Serra, who is a, a professor at IFIS, and uh, the title is Pagrera Physics in Irina Nova. Thank you, Pera, and thanks for the invitation to present uh, in the school uh, our work. I'm going to um, present you the, mostly the work, the PhD thesis work of Javier Oscar, who finished his PhD thesis last November, and uh, of whom uh, Rosa Lopez and myself had been the co-advisors. At the end, I will also um, present some advisors in hybrid nanowires. And uh, I begin with an introduction. And uh, Majorana physics, of course, originates uh, in Majorana himself. He suggested in 1937 uh, that in addition to electrons and positrons, which are mm, antiparticles of each other, he suggested uh, an additional type of elementary particles having the peculiar uh, uh, property that they have uh, real wave functions. And he found this, uh, he suggested this additional uh, type of particles um, as real solutions of Dirac equation. By definition, a Majorana particle is a particle that is its own antiparticle. So if you think of electrons and positrons, that uh, they are antiparticles of each other, they have reversed charge. Majorana particle, by definition, should be neutral, since it is its own antiparticle. They have no charge. Majorana particles suggested uh, in 1937 have not really been uh, observed, clearly observed in nature, despite uh, a lot of efforts. The closest or the, the more uh, similar 
particles to Majorana, uh, to real Majorana particles are neutrinos, which are still being debated uh, whether these are Majorana particles or not. The fact uh, that a special experiment, which is neutrinoless double beta decay. If this is observed, a neutrinoless double beta decay, then this would be a clear signal that uh, neutrinos are Majorana particles. Here are the two rea reactions of, of uh, double beta decay. Um, let's say a, a first beta decay is a neutron going to a proton, an electron, and uh, an antineutrino. And we can think of a second beta decay, which is a neutron absorbing a neutrino and going to a proton plus an electron. If a neutrino and antineutrino are the same particle, that is, if this is a Majorana particle, then uh, the neutrino which is absorbed in this second reaction could be just the, the, the neutrino produced in the first reaction. And then in the end, we, ju we just have two neutrons grown going into two protons and two electrons without any neutrino. So this is why neutrino-less double beta decay would be a complicated experiments are being carried out to clarify this. Uh, this is the tough part of the experiment. This is done in a very isolated condition, so you have to remove all other possibility of sources. And I, I don't know the precise details, but in, in uh, elementary particle um, experiments, they can do very sophisticated setups. And this is done, really. Uh, looking for uh, the signature of neutrino as double beta decay but as I said, this is not yet clear. So there are noise, uh, uncertainties, and it's being debated. So you should not detect, you should detect the two protons and the two electrons and no neutrino. So they have this type of experiment with, with um, four pi detector trying to um, discard this, uh, the existence of these neutrinos. But I think uh, most of the reactions, you have the neutrino and the anti-neutrino. Here, uh, we want to take another uh, point of view, and it is, uh, can we think of uh, having Majorana physics in a condensed matter system? Can we engineer, can we, let's say, control this kind of physics in a, in a condensed matter device produced in, in the lab? So this is the point of view we want to take. And the answer is that it has been suggested that by using a superposition of uh, electrons and holes in the framework of superconductivity, using of superconductivity, a very similar uh, scenario of this um, uh, elementary particle picture can be obtained. L let me um, comment a little bit about this analogy. If we think of the Bogoliubov de Gen description of quasi particles in a superconductor, we have um, an, an energy gap, uh, and then we have positive energy uh, quasi particle states, and completely symmetrical at negative energy, we have uh, negative energy quasi particle states. This is the Bogoliubov de Gen uh, picture. So there is a gap here representing the condensate of Cooper pairs, and uh, an excitation is obtained by placing a quasi-particle in a positive energy state, or by removing a quasi-particle from the negative energy state, creating a hole. In the ground state of the superconductor, uh, all the negative uh, energy states, they are filled by quasi-particles, and uh, an excitation is the removal of one of them at negative energy. Infinite number of quasi-particle whole state is in complete analogy with the idea of the Dirac C, which, is, um, which was suggested by Dirac to explain particles and antiparticles. So we have here a, a very similar picture. We call these the fermionic states at positive and at negative energies, and we may label them uh, like that, I where I is 1, 2, 3, or minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And these are the Hamiltonian 
eigenstates. Majorana states are at zero energy, and we can understand them in the following way. Uh, if we think of the fermionic uh, representation of the, this fermionic basis, and we think of a change of basis from the fermionic to a Majorana base, we may define, uh, uh, if we take a couple of states i and minus i, let's say three for instance, and minus three, which are the, the conjugate, the antiparticle one of the other, three and minus three. If we take this combination with a plus, or this combination here with a minus and the prefactor i, it's clear that this choice give uh, self-conjugate states. Let's say the antiparticle of gamma A is itself, because since I go into minus I, and minus I go into I, when we take the antiparticle, gamma A remains um, unchanged, and the same for gamma B. But uh, in this um, uh, presentation, this is just a mathematical change of base, which has no, no uh, physical meaning in the sense that what are the eigenstates are i and minus i. And minus one, they are approaching zero energy. Then they become degenerate. And in this case, the Majorana combinations are also eigenstates of the system because of the degeneracy. So these are the Majorana states that become stationary and Hamiltonian zero, I, zero energy eigenstates only when uh, we have this pair of states exactly at zero energy. So the signature of these Majorana states in, in uh, superconductivity is that they lie at zero energy. So they are degenerate with the ground state of the superconductor. Majorana states are also topological states, which means that uh, they appear um, in localized regions, regions of the system. So uh, they normally appear on the edges or the ends, if we think of a 1D system, at the ends of the, of, the, of the system. And they are protected by the energy gap, which is separating the zero energy state from the nearby fermionic states. So in this sense, it is why it is normally mentioned that Majorana states, they are robust to local sources of noise because they are protected by particle hole symmetry and by the energy gap around uh, separating the zero energy from the uh, mentioned that uh, the interest in the Majorana states is that they have very peculiar um, statistics. When you change um, to Majorana states, they don't follow the usual Fermi statistics or Bose or Boso. Fermion statistics or boson statistics, but they have non-abelian statistics, meaning that the phase that it is acquired when you change two Majoranas is not defined. Depends on how you do this change. Uh, depends on the precise way the change is performed. So this is completely different to fermions and bosons, where, where for fermions we always have a minus sign, and for bosons we have a plus sign. For Majoranas, depends on the, it, it's a non-trivial phase. that depends on the precise exchange. And this is the basis for one of the, let's say, long-term goals in the field, which is uh, the idea that Majorana states have been proposed as uh, basic units for a topological quantum computer. Taking into account these non-trivial change properties of the Majoranas, or whether they are a change in a particular way or another. So this would be, uh, this has been suggested as the basis for a topological uh, quantum computer. For instance, in 1D nanowires, as mentioned in here in this reference, it has been suggested that uh, this uh, a change, this braiding of Majoranas can be obtained by elongating one of the arms of the, of the, um, of the two mm, segments where we have Majorana states at the ends, elongating one of the ends, then reconnecting and the Majorana state is transferred and then uh, we uh, reduce also the length of the second arm. This can be done in this way or first elongating the other arm, this would lead to another, um, to another um, 
final state where the, the two Majoranas are exchanged. So this is one of the long-term interest in, uh, understand, in better understanding the Majorana states in condensed matter. Our quantum wires placed in proximity with a superconductor. We already mentioned that the superconductor is an essential, an important ingredient and in presence of a magnetic field. These experiments uh, were pioneered or were fa done in the first place in the Delft group, uh, in Leo Kubenhofen's group in 2012, and they uh, took an, a, a semiconductor nanowire, indium arsenide or indium antimonide nanowire, and they put it in contact with a normal metal electrode and the superconductor at the edges of the nanowire in contact with the superconductor, it is believed that localized Majorana states are formed due to the precise combination of these ingredients that we will mention um, in what follows. The signature in the Delft experiment of the Majorana state, a different, uh, potential difference between the normal and the superconductor, the current flows through the, through the nanowire and when the nanowire has the Majorana state on its ends, it is suggested, it is believed that um, this leads to a peak in the differential conductance at zero energy. It is this peak, which you can see here uh, in, from the experiment, and it is there for a certain range of magnetic fields for a, 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 long, um, a, a large enough range of magnetic field, so it is a robust, uh, stable peak at zero energy. In more recent experiments, in 2016, this zero bias peak has been seen more. But in terms of your client, is it, I mean, because of the presence of this uh, Majorana? Exactly. When the Majorana, the Majorana states are on the edges, on the ends of the nanowire, and they are at zero energy. The, the differential conductance as a function of voltage, you can view the voltage as uh, a way to scan the energy of the excitation. When the voltage is zero, we are looking at the excitation at zero energy, and we have a peak, meaning that we have this state at zero energy. When we move away from zero, the peak disappears, uh, and until we reach some um, sizable voltage, where we just exceed the superconductor gap. So th this is the, the gap of excitations uh, until we just exceed the superconductor gap energy. And th this would be the zero energy state. Next. These experiments uh, were done in the Delft group and it has been confirmed. They have been confirmed by other experiments in other groups in uh, Lund, in, uh, in Israel, in, in Copenhagen. So different groups have seen also this, uh, the existence of the zero bias peak. And uh, of course, this, this was motivated also by theoretical suggestion. Uh, uh, in these works, uh, it was argued that the precise combination of a semiconductor, um, superconductor, and magnetic field would create the special conditions for the emergence of the zero modes. This was, was suggested in 2010, and uh, it took only about two years to detect them in these experiments I was mentioning. The zero bias peak is uh, nowadays the more uh, solid evidence, but it is questioned uh, certainty that the, it is due to a mm, Majorana state. There could be other, other mechanisms, for instance, um, um, uh, bound the states within the superconductor gap or um, mm -hmm. disorder, uh, other type of mechanism. And, but more and more evidence is accumulating in the field that uh, it is really Majorana states which are uh, mm -hmm. responsible for the zero bias peak. But it's something that we don't have a 100% clear proof, let's say. So evidences are accumulating a bit, a bit by a bit. So the model I will be considering is a semiconductor quantum wire uh, in a continuum 
continuum description. Uh, this is the Hamiltonian in the Bogolty above the gen uh, framework I was mentioning before, and contains uh, uh, here tau represents the isospin degree of freedom, referring to the electron and hole uh, uh, space. Then we have the sigmas, uh, which refer to the spin. So we have isospin, spin, and space degrees of freedom represented here by the kinetic energy, the potential of the 1D or the edges in higher dimension. So we need the potential um, in order to introduce some edges. And superconductivity is described in a very simple term by a constant uh, uh, pairing energy delta zero tau x. Theoretically, uh, it was suggested that Majoranas must be spinless in order to avoid spin degeneracy, and uh, this model uh, is a way to achieve so-called chiral um, um, spinless modes by means of a combination of magnetic field and spin orbit interaction. So the, uh, considering here magnetic field, the Zeeman term, superconductivity and spin orbit interaction, these three ingredients is a way to um, provide the necessary framework for the zero modes. If we just take this Hamiltonian and we diagonalize and obtain the spectrum of eigenvalues, we find a result like this, where the dots, the red dots are the um, states as a function of the Zeeman, of the Zeeman of the Zeeman energy. Uh, for instance, at zero Zeeman energy, we have the picture we mentioned before, states at negative parameter, delta B. We see that one of the states goes towards zero energy, and at, at some point, uh, it becomes exactly zero. After that, the state, one state remains at zero, and other states uh, remain at positive energy. So it's precisely the phenomenology I was mentioning that a zero mode, a zero energy mode, appears here in this region, and uh, for that we need to overcome a critical uh, magnetic field, which is about five in this, in this case. So this is one, one phase without um, zero mode, and this is another phase with the zero mode. you can view it as a spinless because from the experiment you saw that the zero bias peak is not affected by a magnetic field. It remains at zero. So it's a way to say that it has no spin, not affected by magnetic field. But in order to um, create the necessary condition for the Majorana state, we need these three, these three ingredients. But, uh, and this is actually the proof because yeah. by solving the, this this Hamiltonian with fixed parameters and just varying delta B, we find this spectrum of eigenstate. And this is showing you that when delta B is uh, larger than this value, this is a critical value, there is a zero mode. It's essential to have the, the magnetic field. You, you, you will understand better maybe later. This is an example of the so-called bulk to edge um, that system we are able to um, say when uh, edge modes, sta localized states on the edges emerge. And in this case, uh, we have a trivial phase without uh, end states. This trivial phase occur when the Zeeman energy is smaller than, uh, is smaller than delta zero squared plus mu squared. In this case, the energy bands are, uh, have this shape. If, if we think of the uh, energy bands in a, 1D, in a 1D system as a function of k, then we have a gap at k equals 0. Precisely when delta b is equal to this value, there is a gap closing at k equals 0, but only at this particular delta b. And when this delta b is exceeded, the gap opens again. 
So the bands here and here, they are similar, but state, this is a trivial phase. And here we have an end state, which is a topological phase. So in, the, in this uh, region here, we have an state, uh, a Majorana state attached to the edge, to the edge of the sample. In this case, for instance, around x equal 10. There is a transition phase, uh, there is a critical field for the trans transition phase. Here? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, this is the mm. result obtained by solving this Hamiltonian here, where v, v of x is this, this barrier, a potential barrier here. City, sorry, the wave function modulus squared. And uh, this is uh, uh, the, the density corresponding to this zero mode here. This is the zero mode uh, appearing here, which is completely attached to the, to the edge. And uh, this is obtained when the Zeeman energy exceeds this value. Before this value, we don't have this zero mode. The topological phases can be characterized by um, topological invariants known as chair numbers. And uh, to complement that picture, we have also used an alternative uh, approach, which is based on the so-called complex band structure. This is a method that um, tries to directly um, optim considering the Schrodinger eigenvalue problem for a given wave function having a wave number k. Uh, usually, uh, we consider this as an eigenvalue problem where we find A for a given wave number. But we can also present that as an inverse problem, which is given the energy, determine which are, which are the possible wave numbers. And find all those possible Ks for a given uh, E. If E, if the energy is zero, then Having all these wave numbers, we will have the information to really uh, describe uh, the Majorana state, which is a decaying state uh, like that. A state with real wave number, with real K, they describe, let's say, propagating states, state, a state that they extend to the bulk of the system. This is an example of the K versus energy the black is corresponds to propagating states, so real wave numbers, real K wave numbers, and the dashed on this uh, on this upper plot corresponds to the purely imaginary uh, wave numbers. Also have uh, modes uh, having both real and imaginary. So, if, for instance, you take this energy, you can have this real part and this imaginary part. Uh, so at the same time. This type of picture is normally presented by rotating, uh, and we just draw E versus K, but it is, it's completely the same, the same idea. So how can we describe the edge or the end in 1D uh, on the two ends, the end states from the complex wave numbers? We, we just imagine a superposition with a given constant CKs of all the allowed solution for a given energy uh, with all wave numbers k. If we are interested in, the, in, in those states which decay for positive x, then we have to include here those with imaginary part, which is positive. Um, so this is the form of, the, of each solution for a given k. And then the edge condition, if we imagine a sharp edge, uh, an infinite barrier, then the, the state should vanish here. And then uh, the vanishing of the wave function at the edge is transformed in this condition that you can see here. This condition we can view as uh, a homogeneous uh, linear problem. 
and in order to have a non-trivial uh, solution for the uh, vanishing determinant, the determinant of, of this matrix should be zero, and of course there should be no real uh, case. So from these two conditions, we can obtain uh, whether uh, there is a zero mode attached to the edge or not. And in fact, when we compute the determinant as a function of the Zeeman energy, which is here on the lower panel, we see that uh, the determinant is non-zero up to this value here, and after that uh, is exactly zero. This is signaling the transition from a trivial phase where there is no edge mode to the topological phase with the edge mode. And uh, from the complex band structure, this the transition point corresponds to the vanishing of the imaginary part, which is, mm, as we mentioned before, the point where the gap ex exactly closes. This idea can be also taken to 2D. And here, uh, the uh, edge is now vanishing of the wave function occur now on this, on this border. Uh, we can transform the, the same problem we had before of the vanishing of the wave function and as, um, as a condition for a, a matrix M, which is that there should be a zero eigenvalue, a zero eigenvalue for matrix M. And uh, this matrix M, now we can compute by taking into account a large enough set of complex wave numbers, Ks, and looking at uh, what is the lowest eigenvalue when this uh, set of complex wave numbers is uh, bigger and bigger. And we see that there is indeed, uh, for the proper region of parameters, there is indeed um, an eigenvalue that goes to zero. So this matrix M, when there is um, a Majorana state, has a zero eigenvalue. And this is exactly the, the appearance, how this zero eigenvalue looks like for a given set of parameters, uh, and it is really, it, it is as we expect, attached to the edge and decays towards the inside of the nanowire. Uh, th this is a method that allows to describe a semi in uh, corresponding to the opposite edge uh, of, this, uh, of this one here, also able to attach uh, zero mode. Okay, this was uh, the, uh, the um, introduction and uh, what I wanted to maybe tell you in a little more detail is what uh, we have studied. Uh, we have gone in, uh, we have studied the topological phases in different types of nanowires increasing the dimensionality from 1D to 2D to 3D models and considering different ingredients, different physical uh, phenomena that uh, appear in these uh, different uh, dimensions. So I plan, I plan to uh, Javier Oscar's thesis uh, consider up to these uh, cylindrical nanowires. And I wanted, uh, no, sorry, this, these two, two aspects were not, not considered in, in uh, Javier Oscar's thesis. So I wanted to tell you about these two aspects of the thesis. And then these two extensions we have uh, done recently. So what, one thing uh, we studied, Majorana nanowires. So if you think in a 1D, purely 1D system, we were thinking, we were presenting before the situation when the magnetic field is aligned with the nanowire, but what happens if we tilt the magnetic field in a certain direction given by polar angles theta and phi. Uh, how do this depends on uh, the misalignment of the magnetic field? We know that uh, the phase transition for the emergence of uh, H states occurs when the Zeeman energy exceeds this precise value. And it is also known from the experiment that uh, if the Majorana is uh, sorry, if the magnetic field is oriented precisely in transverse di direction, in the y direction, uh, in this condition there is no uh, zero mode. But what is the precise angular dependence of the mm, topological phases? This is the question we wanted to address. 
and it can be summarized in the form of two independent laws. So one law is uh, the critical field rule, which does not depend on the angles, uh, and it, it's uh, written here. So the Zeeman energential, when this uh, occurs, uh, uh, it is fulfilled the critical field rule. And we have a second rule, which is so-called projection rule, which summarizes the, um, the angular dependence. So in, in the, first, the first rule, we already mentioned a little bit, the imaginary part vanishes, and the energy bands uh, close at k equals 0. There is a band closing here at k equals 0. For the second uh, rule, which is the projection rule, it's saying that uh, the projection of the Zeeman energy, delta B sinus theta sinus phi, can be viewed as the Zeeman energy in the projection of uh, Y, should be smaller than delta zero, where delta zero is the superconducting uh, pairing energy. If uh, when, delta, uh, um, when this inequality uh, becomes uh, vanishes and then it remains zero all the time or uh, independent of the tilting angle, if we vary the tilting angle. So we, when we increase the angle, at some angle, this uh, imaginary part goes to zero and then it remains zero. This is in the complex um, space for the wave numbers. If we look of the, uh, into the energy bands, uh, this corresponds to a closing of the gap, but this is an indirect gap. So it is these points at finite k which are closing the gap, not like here where we have a direct gap closing at k equals zero. So when uh, the, the first um, contribution to this inequality is larger than delta zero, we get a gap closing here at finite k, and uh, this is uh, detrimental for Majorana formation because then we have propagating modes. So these two, two rules summarize the angular dependence in an infinite nanowire, uh, and they can, they are we, I mentioned before the Hamiltonian in a finite nanowire. We obtain a spec, uh, result like this one. The dashed line are the results for the two uh, rules that I have mentioned. First is the phase transition rule. And we see that the finite system uh, uh, is close to the prediction, but w we have some small difference here with, with the precise point due to the finite size effects. Uh, also, when the projection rule uh, is not fulfilled, then uh, the Majorana state is no longer uh, at zero energy, and we see a degradation here. So we can say that Majorana rules are met as approximations in finite nanowires. Another thing we have studied is uh, magnetic orbital motion in, in 2D planar nanowires. When we add an extra dimension, like here, we add, we consider a planar system, and we ask ourselves the question, are the 1D nanowire results valid? And this second dimension is essential to consider some important physical mechanisms, like uh, the magnetic orbital motion. In this case, uh, we may have orbiting of the quasi-particles, and also the so-called Reichba mixing, which is an interaction due to the transverse momentum. Uh, adding this extra dimension, uh, we, sh we should uh, add different contributions to our model. Here in blue, we have the the y kinetic energy and now the confinement v which is depending on x and y along y we have a square well square well potential and in this square well we can think of the transverse state so 
we have the first transverse state, the second transverse state, and in the model we have above, each of the bands, of the transverse bands, behaves as an independent uh, 1D nanowire. So there will be a critical field for each transverse uh, mode, depending on the transverse state energy, epsilon n. One connected with the first transverse band, one with the second transverse band, and so on. However, when we include the Rashba mixing term, which is this term depending on, on the PY momentum, uh, this term is coupling the different transverse mode majorans between themselves, and as a result, uh, there is only one majorana load on each end of the nanowire. Because when we have multiple majoranas, the interaction between them removes them from zero energy. So they repel each other and they are no longer at precisely zero energy. Uh, if there is an, an even number, for instance, two um, majoranas, they will repair and they are not exactly at zero energy. So due to the Rashba mixing term, we can only have zero or one majorana in each edge of the nanowire. The Rajba mixing term also affects the precise um, analytical formula for the phase, uh, for the transition, for the phase transition uh, field of the phase diagram that we obtain when we draw the Rajba interaction as a function of the Zeeman energy. So uh, white regions are trivial, meaning that they don't have an H uh, zero mode, and dark regions correspond to the presence of one H zero mode. That's true. Well, it's a mixture of them. One of them remains when you have three, for instance, uh, three transverse modes. Uh, you, you get a repulsion between them, but they must be distributed symmetrically. So this assures you that one of them will remain at precisely zero energy and two others will move out. But which one of them remains is, is, is a, a mixture of them. Uh, we also consider here the effect of uh, out-of-plane magnetic field in, in 2D when, when we allow the problem because it's connected to the orbital effects. This is connected to the orbital currents, kinetic orbital effects. We have uh, additional terms in the Hamiltonian, which are these highlighted here, and also an additional term due to the Rashba mixing. This, these new terms depend on the magnetic length, Lz, which is connected to the Z component of the magnetic field. And there is also a connection between the Zeeman energy and uh, the magnetic length, which is given here. Uh, in simple terms, we can say that uh, the orbital effects are um, the vertical field is introducing uh, modification in the confinement itself. So uh, we have the external confinement, which is a square well, but uh, this type of term is giving a Y squared uh, contribution which is giving a kind of a parabolic confinement along y. So this is affecting the distribution of, of uh, energy levels due to the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is a transition of the phase transition for the edge states. And in this case, we obtain critical angles for the phase transition. When there are strong orbital effects, we find critical angles due to the fact that the levels themselves, they are changed. So uh, in absence of orbital effects, we have critical, critical Zeeman energies. Let me see if this works. Critical Zeeman energies. And in presence of uh, strong orbital effects, we have critical magnetic fields. So in the phase diagram, we have uh, critical Zeeman energies as straight lines and critical angles as horizontal lines. 
and the transition uh, boundaries in the phase diagram evolve from the straight lines, the vertical lines, to the horizontal lines. So we have a um, phase diagram like that, where this is the critical angle, and this would be a Majorana uh, region. Uh, uh, however, when we increase the Rajba interaction, we get deviation from these analytical limits. The Rajba interaction uh, is um, introducing this kind of term shown here. And this can be understood as a magnetic field which is affecting in a different way spin up and spin down electrons and depending on why. So kind of a qualitative way of understanding that. And this affects the boundaries of the phase diagram uh, strongly distorting, for instance, here, uh, this boundary is distorted like that when the mm, spin orbiting length, the, the, the Rajba interaction is stronger or I think I have, a, uh, sorry, I think I have, no, well, the, this is enlarging the region of the Majorana H state. I already mentioned about the calculation of the densities and so these Majorana edge states. If we take just the two smallest wave numbers and we plot the length corresponding to the wave numbers, then the, the largest would be the, 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 the length of the tail of the, of the Majorana state. So varying the, the angle, we see here that the length uh, is, uh, um, let's say, the mode contributing to the decay length changes from one mode to another. And approaching the critical value of the transition angle, the, the length diverges. Because one of the modes really goes to zero in the complex plane, and we get a divergence in the, in the, decay, in the decay length, which is, let's say, the Majorana extension, spatial extension. So uh, maybe I mentioned briefly about these distributions in space. Uh, when we consider um, junction between a Majorana nanowire, possibly hosting a uh, Majorana edge state, and the normal lead, uh, normal contact, where we may have the incidence of an electron, which is somehow reflected. And we were interested in finding uh, signatures of the distribution of uh, density and current in the normal lead uh, due to the existence of the Majorana H state. What distributions are important to look at? First, we have to uh, notice that there are three different type of distribution. We have the quasi-particle distribution, quasi-particle density, and quasi-particle current. Then we have the charge distribution, the charge density and the charge current. And we also have the spin, the spin density and the uh, conservation law, meaning that the, the quasi-particle probability is conserved. The charge and the spin, they are not conserved. The charge is not conserved because there are processes involving the superconductor uh, condensate, the transfer of Cooper pairs which are not uh, considered in these uh, currents. So this is the, the kind of distributions that we obtain. The, the first two um, panels, they are for a situation in which a Majorana state is present at the edge. So th this is Y, this is X, and this is uh, in a color scale, we see the quasi-particle density and the arrows are showing the quasi-particle current. And we see here that there is an incident of uh, quasi-particle um, current, which is uh, reflected, reflected back, and it, it couples with the Majorana state, which manifests that if we look into the charge uh, distribution, uh, uh, the Majorana state doesn't leave a clear signal on the size distribution, on the charge distribution. We just see an opposite charges on the two edges of the, of the nanowire. We have negative charge 
indicating this incidence of an electron and positive charge on the other edge, which is uh, connected to the um, process known as Andreyev reflection. This is an electron which is reflected as a whole and uh, this is why we have negative and positive charge. If we now consider uh, a situation in which we remove the zero mode by just tilting the field, we mentioned before that we have a rule that when we tilt the magnetic field, we leave the region of the Majorana, and this has a strong effect on the distributions of quasi-particle density, and we don't no longer see here the, the vortices connected to the, to the Majorana state, and the quasi-particle uh, density and current now is attached to a single edge, of the, to the upper edge of the nanowire. Before it was distributed symmetrically on the, on the normal contact, and when the Majorana is not present, it just goes on the side. So this is, we can say, a signature of the existence of the Majorana state on the current in the normal lead. The two lower panels uh, represent a situation in which the, the field is small, such that we are no longer in the Majorana phase, and uh, we don't see the vortices, and we just have a normal reflection of the in an electron, which is reflected back. Another uh, peculiar um, prediction uh, is that the Majorana uh, state is connected to the emergence of a spin current source. So the Majorana state is connected to accumulations of a spin density, we see spin current, and uh, we see that there is a spin current which is um, emitted in the direction of the normal contact. The two panels correspond to a situation in which we have a Majorana state. If a Majorana state is not present, then we, we, we don't have any spin current appearing on the normal contact. And this spin current has a perfectly symmetric shape. We have added here an asymmetric barrier uh, just to check that there is not a big change if we, we place a barrier here on the junction between normal and major and nanowire. This just affects, distorts a little bit the distribution of quasi-particles but uh, when we move uh, away from the, from the edge, we move towards the, the normal contact, we get the same distributions as before. So this is uh, in agreement with the idea that uh, we have here topological properties which are robust, not affected by small disturbances like a barrier placed here. Yes. What is the barrier made of? Well, this is in a, um, in a model and we'll just consider a potential barrier. In practice, you could think of impurities or, um, or an electrode, an asymmetric electrode which is deposited on top, on top of your sample and by applying a potential, uh, this could create a potential barrier. So maybe I should... Uh, I, I can just... Um, we also consider magnetoconduct, uh, just as a very general conclusions, I wanted to say that I hope uh, um, I have convinced you that Majorana physics can be seen in hybrid nanowires and nanowire junctions, and um, this Majorana physics manifests in the existence of topological phases in these Majorana nanowires, uh, topological phases in which we have end states uh, connected to the nanowires and that this may lead to novel applications. So thank you very much. Uh, questions? Comments? Uh, Ingo? Well, we have already. Maybe just a very practical question. Uh, you really um, uh, model different configurations with uh, different realistic right. uh, geometries. 
Uh, does the inside already allow you to design uh, geometries which are particularly favorable to, to observe these edge states for experiments? I would say yes, and actually this is one, one of the things I, I, I um, had in my list. Uh, we have recently looked in, into prismatic nanowires because in experiment these uh, nanowires, they are normally produced with a kind of polygonal shape. And uh, we have recently um, studied this peculiar geometry. And in this polygonal shape, the Majorana um, states are formed along the edges of the prism. And by controlling the size, the width of the core shell nanowires, this affects the interaction between them. So I think these kind of models, uh, they can tell you when um, you have interaction between dice of operation of a device, for instance. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Yeah. One question, a naive question, say. Uh, for example, when you start to talk about Majorana fermions, uh, you mentioned that was experiment with uh, displays conductance at uh, for zero. The uh, zero bias beam. Exactly. Yes. So you made a lot of nice calculation and the models, whatever. It seems that it would be straightforward to look how conductance in this way, in this case, behave. And this would be manifestation. Do you have Majorana or not? I mean, did you think yes, about this? This we have also looked at, you mean the calculation of the differential conductance. Yeah, and this we have, yeah, we have uh, checked. I mean, when you have a phase with a Majorana, if you compute the differential conductance, you have a peak at zero, at zero bias. No, but um, the existence of the peak, let's say it's somehow straightforward. Once you have um, clarified that you have a zero energy state. Well, the question is very simple. But maybe affected a little bit by geometry. Or you have a wire, you have rush bar term, and this is very easy to create, I mean, experimentally. And if you predict something, it can be also verified, uh, your prediction. No, we have computed the, have the IDB. If I was very surprised. If you talk, I mean, or maybe you, you meant some not uh, feel at all. You understand my question. If it's spinless, and Zeeman term is uh, related to, and spin orbit related yes, to the degree of freedom, oh, sorry. we can talk. No, no, but let me, let me answer. 